Thank you for everyone to be here, and it's my great honor to be here to share you my result of the um, Chlorella paranoidosa extract. It's an uh, antiviral effect against a dengue virus, dengue virus type 2. I'm Yiling Chen from Chinese Cultural University, Taiwan. And dengue fever is uh, the most uh, emergent uh, viral infectious disease in the world. And it's, it is transmitted by the mosquito and uh, it affects the area uh, of a tropical and a subtropical uh, area in the world. As you can see from the figure, uh, half of the country were inf influenced. And uh, every year, is, there's about um, 50, to, 50 to 100 million cases of dengue fever and 0.5 million cases of um, dengue hemorrhagic fever and resulting about 25,000 of deaths. So, um, with the proceeding climate changes, uh, it's, it is getting worse and uh, more complicated. Dengue virus is a kind of flavivirus and belongs to Flaviviridae. It contains single positive stranded RNA genome and it's going to be translated into three structural proteins and seven non-structural proteins and it contains four serotypes which means it, they are gen 1, 2, 3, 4. And here is the genome organization and viral protein expression pattern. You can take a look. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, that there's four serotypes of dengue viruses. So there is a very special phenomenon of uh, dengue virus infection, antibody-dependent enhancement. That means if you uh, infected with the first serotype of uh, dengue virus and you can get the uh, antibody. And this antibody will promote the subsequent infection of the second serotype of dengue viruses. The, the symptom will be that much more severe and which cause the dengue hemorrhagic fever. It's very dangerous situation and uh, usually affects the children at the age of two to eight years old and uh, it results in the uh, multiple organ bleeding. The mortality rate is about, about 10 to 50 percent. And when you get this uh, hemorrhagic fever, the doctor couldn't do anything more. Their uh, lack, lack of the uh, medicine and they probably give you the supportive therapy. And the good news is there is a vaccine approved by uh, US FDA and it's available this year. But the effect of this vaccine uh, remains uh, controversial because it's prescribed for the infected patients, not for the people who uh, haven't infected because it, the vaccine may induce the uh, antibody-dependent uh, enhancement. So it's a bit of dangerous. So we draw our attention to whether we can find uh, natural products for the dengue virus infection. So uh, you can look around the map of the Taiwan. We can have as, as long as, um, as also known as uh, Japan. We have an uh, enormous resource of uh, algae, algae resource. So we we all know that there's a lot of physiological activity about OGA, like such as uh, anti-cancer, coagulation, inflammation, oxidation, and also immunomodulation activities, and also antiviral activities, and uh, against uh, HIV, HSV, CMV, uh, yellow fever virus, and also dengue viruses. And we all know that uh, the ingredients of algal, uh, brown algae uh, for coding and uh, the uh, carrageenan from red algae has the anti-dengue virus serotype 2 uh, activities. Why, why do I mention about dengue 2? It's because the, uh, every year we have a dengue virus 
epidemic. Uh, it mainly uh, induced by the DEN2 viruses. So we want to know whether the chlorella has this effect. And we searched for the uh, references. We found that chlorella vulgaris extract has the effect in uh, MCNV and uh, inducing the serotype, uh, serum interferon and the natural killer cell activity and also decrease the infectious virus in the target organ. So we draw our attention to uh, chlorella and at that time we have the cooperation with the Taiwan chlorella manufacturing company and uh, it, it is the one of the best chlorella manufacturer in the world and uh, uh, they provide us chlorella pyranoidosa extract which is made by hot water uh, extraction and we want to know whether this extracts CPE can prevent DEN2 infections so as long as we get the contents of CPE, we check their uh, composition. We found that we also compare them with calogenin. And uh, we found that CPE has much more proteins and uh, much less sulfated group uh, compared to uh, calogenin. We also uh, analyzed their antioxidant activities. Surprisingly, we found that uh, antioxidant acti activity of CPE is much higher than carrageenan. That's a good news. <laughs> and uh, uh, before we do the uh, cellular uh, experiment, you want to know whether CPE is toxic to cells. So we analyzed their uh, cytotoxicity and we found that as the high concentration to 5 mg per mL, the cell remains viability remains viability to about 90%. So it's, uh, CPE is not cytotoxic. Now I want to I wanna know whether the uh, CPE is effective to dengue viruses and we also want to know whether where's the target step of this action. So uh, here is the replication cycle of dengue virus and it's about 12 hours for whole cycle. And within one hour after uh, infection, the it's early stage containing uh, attachment, internalization, and fusion, and then go, goes to uh, replication and then maturation and secretion. So we add the uh, we infect the cell with a uh, uh, dengue virus and uh, add CPE to see whether the in inhibition of the intracellular viral RNA levels. And we found that the inhibi inhibitory effect happens in the very early stage. So that means the uh, CPE inhibit the virus in the early stage, maybe it's in attachment or internalization uh, steps. And then we set up the protocol for the plug reduction activity. We set up three protocols. Uh, Pre-treatment, we treat uh, CPE before the virus infection. And co-culture, we mix the CPE with viruses for an hour and then add the mixture to cell. And the post-treatment, we add CPE after virus infection. The dosage of virus is uh, is 80 PFU and the uh, dosage of CPE is 0 0.01, 0 0.01 to 10 milligram, uh, sorry for typo. And then we found that CPE do have the induced the uh, plug reduction activity at the concentration of one milligram per mL and in the condition of pre treatment and the co-culture treatment. Compared to carrageenan, it's not as good as carrageenan, and, uh, uh, but they are all the same in the post-treatment. They don't have the effect. And then we want to know where, whether CPE has the effect in the viral RNA synthesis. And uh, as the concentration from 0.1 milligram 
we can see a significant reduction of the viral RNA level in the condition of pretreatment. And then we want to know whether not only just the RNA synthesis, we also want to know whether it has inhibitory uh, effect in the antigen in the DEN2 DEN antigen expression. So we, uh, as you can see from the result of a immunofluorescence experiment, you can see uh, not only in the pretreatment but also in the cultural uh, protocol we can see the reduction of the antigen expression. So both RNA and the antigen expression are all reduced by a CPE. And uh, since there is a very significant result from, of the co-culturing uh, protocol, so we want to know whether the time is the a point for the reduction. So we uh, co-culture the virus with uh, CPE for different time, and we found that the longer the uh, culture time, the better uh, pro uh, plug production uh, reduction rate. But it's so different from the result from curcumin. That means curcumin uh, antiviral effects so different from CPE. And then we want to know whether, in the beginning, we found that the uh, dosage of CPE, is uh, the effect is so different from the care genome. Maybe it's because CPE is uh, just uh, uh, crude extracts. It's not like care genome is a uh, pure compound. So we do the fractions to get uh, CPE F1 and F2. F1 is over uh, 100 kilodalton, and F2 is uh, under 100 kilodalton. And we found the, uh, the result of uh, plot, plot reduction rate. We found that the effective components are in the uh, F1 fraction. And now it's just a brief summary of the cell in, vi in vitro study. We found that post-treatment is not effective to the viruses, and uh, pretreatment and co-culture are effective for CPE to against, uh, fight against uh, dengue virus uh, infection. And then we, when we finish all these cellular studies, we want to go to animal study. But in the beginning, we, we, kind, we, meet, we, we think it's very difficult to do that in the animal model because there are not many good animal models for the dengue virus infection. So, it, so we try to uh, set up our own system and then we found the condition that we inject the suckling mice into the brain with the viruses and uh, uh, evaluate their healthy status and the uh, dengue viral infection symptoms every day. And then we, the, we check their healthy score. The zero means death, 10 means healthy. And uh, the other level of uh, score in the between. And then we found that at, at about nine days after infection, all the healthy score go reduced to zero. And uh, for the survival rate, 10 days after infection, all the animals were dead. And then we also want to know whether the symptoms is compatible to human uh, dengue hemorrhagic fever that means whether the animal has the uh, bleeding of its organs. And as you can see from the pictures, there's gastrointestinal bleeding of the uh, animal model. And we also check other organs. There's a spleen and liver and kidney are also bleeding. So the, it's kind of like human symptoms. And we also do the pathology of the tissue. We found there really has a red blood cell in the tissue and uh, uh, vascular inflammation and also the corruption of uh, epidermis. So together with all this uh, pathology and symptoms, we know that we successfully established the uh, animal model for the dengue hemorrhagic fever. So we use this mice model to uh, to do our experiment, 
we inject the uh, mixture of virus with CPE in different concentrations into their suckling mice uh, brain and follow up their survival rate. And uh, we found out that in the situation of uh, 100 PFU, the CPE can rescue 100% survival rate compared to carrageenan. They are uh, as good as each other. And in the situation of five, uh, 500 PFU, it performed, uh, it performed the 40% of uh, survival rate, which is also good. So here is our conclusion, a simple conclusion. Uh, the extracts from chlorella paranoidosa can reduce the Gen 2 infection in vitro and uh, from the RNA level, antigen expression level, and uh, also a plug reduction level. And uh, the extract can also improve survival rate in Gen 2 infection mice model. Uh, in the end, I want to my special thanks go to Society for Chlorella and the Functional Plan Research for the financial support for traveling. And also my thanks goes to uh, National Science and Technology Council for the uh, project support. And uh, we are welcome for all kinds of collaborations. So if you are interested in our results, and research, please come to us. And uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for a very nice talk and the interesting data. So uh, perhaps uh, one or two, two questions from the audience. Or may I have a question? OK, yes. thank you. Okay. Uh, it's very interesting. And do you think that uh, actually in vivo study, uh, when you co-inject uh, the virus is also chlorella extract, it seems to be virus infection, but it's, it's prevented. Yeah. And do you think it's really due to perhaps a carbohydrate, or do you think other component might be involved? So what, what, what do you think? You think your hypothesis could be carbohydrate from the chlorella is important? In the, in the previous uh, experience with other algo, uh, algo in ingredients, the action components is always po uh, the sugar and sulfate, sulfate uh, sugar. I think it probably <coughs> have the same way. Uh, but in, in the step of uh, attachment and internalization, I think sugar is very important. Thank you very much. And, uh, or, and uh, may I have an additional question? People may know that if, I think if you, the mice take this chlorella extract orally, yeah. it can be similar effect. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we are trying this protocol. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.